Hey everyone, this is Martin and I'm Shelly. And I'm down here in the septic tank pit today and um, I just got off the phone with the inspector for the septic system uh, from the county and um, he gave me kind of the final go ahead on what I need to do here and this is a interesting system. We're in southwest Missouri and it's something I've never dealt with or encountered before but um, this is a this system is called a low pressure pipe system which um, opposed to the kind of the regular gravity feed type septic systems this is something that needs to be installed uh, when the soil will not accept will not absorb um, the the fluids or the liquids coming out of the septic system so uh, I'm going to give it a little quick description of what it is and that way you'll have some kind of an understanding because here in southwest Missouri even though our soil is slightly different from maybe a few miles up the road it's still basically all the same you're still dealing with the same kind of issues here which is a thin layer of topsoil then a layer of clay and rock which can be around here it's anywhere from a foot thick to about two feet thick and then below that seems to be a real sticky layer of just solid clay. And then below that is shelf rock. So, um, and depending on the depth of it, up here we ran into the shelf rock about two feet deep down here. Um, we're not sure how deep it is because we got deep enough without running into it. So, <clears throat> if you're looking at, um, at doing this kind of system in this type of a soil, what they do is they test the soil to find out where the absorption level, level is. And in this case, it's about the top 12 to 18 inches of soil it has real good absorption, but once you get below that, it has almost none. So what they do, instead of just letting gravity run its course and you know go out and, and uh, you know as the water is being used and comes into the system and it flows out of the system and just kind of goes into the soil, this has actually got to be pumped. And um, it sort of forces, they, the term they use is it doses the entire field all at once and that's done through a pump which is not a typical uh, sewage pump it's a um, it's for liquids only and it will pump liquids out of the, the second tank uh, in a measured uh, way so what we have is there's two tanks here the first one is to capture and hold solids um, once it's full it drains into the second tank which is mostly for uh, fluids which they call it affluence to me that was a different uh, definition of what I always thought that that was anyway so this one mainly has water or liquids in it and periodically throughout the day um, as the water level comes up it will pump it out um, our system I understand the mechanics of the system but the science of it, I don't completely understand. That's why they have a soil scientist come in and they, they sample the soil and they determine how much water that the soil can, um, can hold uh, before it has to rest and wait to be pumped into again. So after it goes into here, when this reaches a certain level, um, it will activate the pump through a float and pump out the water. Now our system, he said, ideally the amount of um, water that's pumped out per day should be divided up into about four to five um, doses and so he says ideally your field will be set up to accept about 150 gallons per dosing um, we don't have that much water coming out it's just Shelly and I and we've got um, the shower the sinks the laundry and the toilet and so there's not a, we don't end up probably using that much during the day uh, so he said you can dose it as little as 50 gallons at a time so part of that's done by this float on the pump which is set real short uh, right now it's set at just shy of one foot which one foot worth of septic tank pumping is going to equal somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 200 gallons so we've got to set this up very short so it can pump out a smaller amount than that and, but he does say that, you know, it's, it should do multiple times a day, but 
as long as you have it going multiple times a day or break up your system, break up your usage into uh, uh, two or three or four times a day, that'll be fine. Oh. Today, we're gonna set the pump. Um, after we get the pump set, then there's a whole nother issue with getting the field set up correctly and all of the distribution lines out here. And that's a little different than what I expected to, um, especially in the size of the holes that they use. They use little tiny holes that I wouldn't hardly think would work, but that's what they say. So anyway, we're gonna start with the pump. Uh, it's gotta go down inside the tank. I have placed a concrete flat paver block down at the bottom for something to set the pump on. And uh, we're gonna run it out the side here and see if we can get this done. Okay, so inside the tank will be a union that will fit between this outlet pipe and the pump right here. So whenever uh, you need to take the pump out to do maintenance on it or make a repair or, or anything like that, um, you'll be able to di disconnect the main pipe from the pump and lift the pump out of there. That's what that does. Without that, you'd have to cut a pipe in order to get the pump out. So that's the next thing that's going in. Inside the tank sits the pump with this standpipe up, which is the outlet. So when the pump comes on, it pumps it up this pipe and out. This float is what controls it, which will be tied to the pipe. And when the water level comes up, you gotta listen real close because it's a very quiet pump. And the pump came on. And the pump is off. So Wee. when the water when the water level comes up, when the water level comes up, it'll float the float up until the pump comes on. And as the pump comes on, the water is drained down. And when the float turns off, shuts the pump off. Cool. So on, off. The, the distance of float travel is gonna be very, very short on here because we're trying to only pump out 50 gallons at a time, 50 to 100 gallons at a time. And for every foot of water that's in this tank, is equivalent to um, is equivalent to roughly 200 gallons. So, for for this to pump down one foot, it would be pumping out 200 gallons. And so, we're only after about 50 gallons, 50 to 100 gallons. So, the float only needs to travel about this far to turn on and off, which is going to be very little. Um, we'll have to set it almost as short as we can set it and still have it work correctly. So it's gonna be a very short throw on the, on the float. The next thing is we'll have to put a hole in the side of the tank to get the electrical wires out. We can't have the plug-ins down inside the water. So um, I think I'll end up putting that like right here. Inside the second tank, here's the union to pull it apart if we need to work on the pump. Here's the rope to pull it, the pump out of the hole whenever we have to do maintenance on it. The float right now is clamped to the standpipe, so it's in the off position. But if you listen real carefully, you can hear the pump kick on when the float comes to the upright position. So the water comes up, and the pump comes on. Then as the water goes back down, pump shuts off. It's that simple. 
right. Hopefully, we can put the lid on this thing and not have to get back in here again for a while. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and a share, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and there the notification go. bell. Good job. Oh,